morning. We have a busy day today, uh, three lecturers, three different subjects, uh, and then also a Q&A session at the end of the day where all the lecturers are supposed to be are present and to answer the most burning our questions about modern or condensed matter. Uh, do we still have a volunteer uh, to moderate uh, the afternoon a Q&A session? Same person who was doing it yesterday? Okay, we don't need to decide it now, but let's say after lunch. All right, and with that, uh, we have our first lecture uh, of the day. Professor Alex, Alex Kamenev uh, will talk about SYK model. Uh, all right, uh, can you hear me? Cool, uh, thanks for coming. And Thank to organizers for inviting me. So they asked me to talk about SYK model, which is, as you can notice in archives, is a popular subject uh, last couple of years. Um, some people say it's a model of a black hole. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, some people say that it's a model of um, non-Fermi non liquid state or incoherent metal. Um, I'm not sure it's, it's any of this, but it's, in any case, it's a cute model, and there is a lot of interesting physics inside of it, so maybe it's not a complete waste of time to, to learn about it. Um, but uh, I, I'll mention all these applications. So I, I'll do it as a Blackboard presentation, otherwise I will go too fast. Um, but I, I will need a few slides just to show you um, numerical data and uh, some history. So as you can guess from uh, the name of the model, it was suggested by, um, oops, uh, doesn't work, too far away. Yes, it was suggested not by these people, but by completely different people. Uh, it was suggested by Oriol Baigas and uh, Flores in back in 1970s, and then these two gentlemen, French and Wong, uh, wrote a very similar paper. So their motivation was uh, coming from nuclear physics, uh, but uh, nevertheless, the, the model which they uh, considered was precisely equivalent to what is now known as sajdiv yekitaev model. Now, uh, Subir, Sajdiv, and uh, Jin Vuye had no idea, apparently, about those old papers, so they, they had completely different motivation. They, they thought about um, spin fluid uh, states in, in a random Heisenberg magnet. Uh, and that's how they came with the model. So you can, while I'm mumbling here, you can read their abstract. Uh, so apparently their main result is that uh, susceptibility of this random uh, Heisenberg magnet behave logarithmically, and that's a signature of, of, of a spin liquid. So if I forget to mention how this logarithm come about, remind me, I, I'll show you it's, it's one line calculation at some point. Um, all right, so yeah, so I'll tell you about uh, the model, I'll tell you about uh, symmetries and uh, 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 infrared behavior of the model. Maybe I'll, n tomorrow I'll come to tell you a little bit about uh, gravity side of the model. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right, so I better stay here. Right, so, so the model is, is extremely simple and that's why it's probably worth thinking about it. Uh, it's uh, just interacting Hamiltonian, four fermions, uh, chi i, chi j, chi k, and chi l, uh, interacting with some uh, matrix element, j with four indices, and no kinetic energy. Just in only interactions and, uh, and that's it. Um, now, now you should say something about this matrix element, elements, and the simplest thing you can say is that it's just random. Now, what means random? It's, let's say that in average it's zero, and it's Gaussian distributed with a second moment 
which is given by a constant J square. So this J is, uh, is the only energy scale in a model as it is written. There is nothing else. Uh, now, another important parameter here is capital N. That's number of, of our fermions. And you will see that good idea is to scale this uh, variance of J with N cube. I'll explain in a moment why it is a good idea. Now, let's see. Um, so you can think about these guys being Majorana fermions. Uh, and that's what uh, Kitaev suggested. Before him, all the people I mentioned uh, thought about them as being complex fermions. Um, and in that case, you, you probably want to say that it's C dagger, C dagger, C, C. Uh, it's almost equivalent. Uh, at least I don't know any significant difference. Yes? Yes, so the question is if, if I use complex fermions, whether it's the same J. It's almost the same. Now, in, in my Arana representation, this J has to be anti-symmetric with respect to any pair of indices. Right, or, or whatever. Anti-symmetric with respect to IJ, KL, you, you know. Uh, if it is complex fermions, then it's anti-symmetric with respect to, you know, C dagger, C dagger, CC but it's not necessarily anti-symmetric with respect to. Well, uh, from the point of view of ensembles, they are, again, almost equivalent. I, I'll mention in a sec where the difference may, may be. Um, um, so if it is not clear in, in five minutes, then ask again. Um, all right, so uh, again, it's, it's not a uh, big difference. Um, if it's complex fermions, then it conserves number of particles. If it is Majorana fermions, it conserves parity, but does not conserve number of particles, because you may have here C dagger, C dagger, C dagger, C dagger, or three daggers and, and, and one, uh, and one uh, C. Um, now, in a modern quantum computing uh, world, you can think about this model as being sort of a quantum dot with uh, Majorana quantum wires coming to this quantum dot, and there is a Majorana fermion sitting uh, at the end of, it, of, of each wire, and they somehow interact through, through whatever interaction. Uh, you can imagine why it is random is another question, but again, since we don't have anything be better, let, let's think about it. Okay, so uh, before I come to, to analytics, uh, let me mention numerical things. Now, since it's a Majorana fermions, they, they obey uh, this Clifford algebra, so they, they all anti-commute with each other, and if, if it's the same i, then it's just square to one, or one half. Um, now you know that uh, if you want a matrix representation of a Clifford algebra, that's called Dirac gamma matrices. And if you need four or five of them, you want to have matrices four by four. If you want two or three, you, you, you can get away with matrices two by two. In general, you need matrices which with the size of two to the power n over two. Let me write it down. So my, um, all my op operators are going to be represented by matrices with a, if n is not uh, even, then it's an uh, integer part of it. All right? Uh, all right, so you can form uh, these matrices. That's very easy. Uh, to do uh, on a computer, you can form a Hamiltonian and then you can brute force diagonalize this Hamiltonian. So you will have a spectrum, which is a many body spectrum, um, and this is a density of states of this many body spectrum, right? So now let me walk you through it. So if you don't have any interactions, that energy of all states is just zero, 
there is nothing. Uh, so they, all energy levels are completely, and there are two to the power n over two of them. Uh, so in this case, n is 32, so there are two to the 16 energy levels here. Yes? Uh, in the previous slide, yes, uh, what is the class D bional wire? Class D in the bottom. What, what uh, is in the box, class D bional wire. Oh, class D, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, from other talk. Doesn't matter, uh, it, it will take me too far away. Uh, Sorry, it's, it's, it's left from our talk. Um, it's a Majorana wire without time reversal symmetry, which is what experimentalists do. Anyway, uh, right, so you, you diagonalize it. Uh, now they, they repel each other, with many body levels repel each other, uh, and uh, now they, they are not all at zero, but, but they, they, they form a band around zero. Uh, now, that looks more or less like Wigner-Dyson uh, semicircle, right? Uh, there are two differences here, more than two actually. Um, so one is that for, in the case of Wigner-Dyson, we typically try to think about what happens in the middle of the band. That's where Fermi energy is apparently sitting and we, we somehow focus here. Now in this problem, the many body ground state is here. It's, it's just the, the very last eigenstate uh, of, of my Hamiltonian. So at zero temperature, I basically interest only, my, my interest is mainly in, uh, in the very last uh, eigenstate. Um, if, if I have a low temperature uh, compared to, to this infrared, oh, ultraviolet scale, sorry, uh, then I'm interested in a, in a corner uh, of, of this spectrum. Yes, uh, there is a square root singularity at the I will talk about it. Yes. I mean, there is a standard routine in your computer which allow you to, to generate the set of gamma matrices, whatever dim dimension you, you want. Yeah, it's, it's the standard thing now. Um, but, but still, uh, going much beyond uh, 30, people do 34, some people manage to do 36, but uh, you, you, you probably can't go much farther than that. Um, now, you can do some analytical theory, which is, uh, um, I will not do it here, but um, it's done by uh, Garcia Square and, and Verbershot. Um, so then, then you will see that depending on how many fermions you take, uh, your density of states changes. So this is 32, which we already saw. But if you would be able to take 64, nobody can, you will see that it's a pretty good Gaussian. Still, uh, at the very end of this Gaussian, there is a square root singularity, and uh, uh, the physics is, is around here. Um, what else should I say, say here? Um, yeah, there are exponentially many uh, energy states here. So the, so the density of states is exponentially large. And that mean, uh, leads to finite entropy even at zero temperature. Unless you resolve uh, ener uh, energy scales which is comparable to level spacing. Uh, I, I'll mention it again. No, right. So the next thing you can do, you can, uh, you can ask what's the level statistics. Namely, you can take the uh, distribution of consecutive level spacings and what you will find that it's perfect Wigner-Dyson. It's one of the best Wigner-Dyson distributions you, you can imagine. Okay, 
Uh, nobody quite actually understand why it is, uh, because uh, if you think about this huge, exponentially big matrix, it's an extremely sparse matrix, right? There are that many matrix elements. Uh, in this matrix, so that's a matrix with the size of two to the power n over two, and only very few elements uh, have this j i j k l, uh, n of order n to the four matrix elements which are not zero. Uh, so you, you deal with exponentially sparse, yes? Yeah, uh, very good question. So question is whether uh, this uh, level statistics is taken in a bulk or in the tail. So I think this particular picture taken in, in a bulk, but actually if you look for the distribution between ground state and the first excited states, it's also perfectly Wigner dice. Two, you take it. Uh, full disclosure, you have to be careful because the many body space actually splits into even and odd subspaces. So this uh, Hamiltonian conserves parity. So therefore, part of the many body space uh, so there is zero here, zero here. If you properly uh, uh, select uh, your basis, so the actual size is two to the power n over two divided by two. Um, now, if you take spectrum within one of these uh, parity subspaces, you will have this Wigner dice, uh, including the, the very bottom. Um, all right. Uh, Um, no, chiral symmetry would be off diagonal. Uh, no, okay, you, 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 you can ask what kind of Wigner Dyson. Uh, so in this case, it's GOE. Now, the answer is sort of funny. It, it mo modulates with a period eight. So it's all GOE, GOE, GU, GS. Symplectic, symplectic, unitary orthogonal, depending on parity of n, capital N, uh, modulo eight. Now, I will talk only about even n. So for even n, it's, it's, you see it's a period four. Orthogonal, unitary, symplectic, uh, unitary. Okay. And that's because uh, with Clifford algebras, uh, that's scientific notation for them, uh, has additional symmetries which uh, play a role of uh, time reversal symmetry and uh, Kramer's degeneracy. That, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. My understanding is no, but I may be wrong. The question is about both periodicity of topological insulators uh, with dimensionality. Yes? No, look, look, for any capital N, or at least for any even capital N, uh, your Hamiltonian splits into even and odd subspaces. And, uh, yes. This is not number of particles. This is size of your matrix. Right? So number of particles is, is, is a different thing. And it's, it's not conserved even in Majorana case. In, in, in complex fermions, it is conserved. But 
Um, no, right. So the, 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 that's uh, observations. Uh, and uh, there is symmetry understanding why it may be the case, but actually nobody knows why Wigner Dyson is applicable here. Okay. Some people say they do, but uh, actually I, I don't think so. Uh, anyway, let's see what, right. So you, you can look for what is called sigma two, namely variance of number of energy levels within a window of size epsilon. And this epsilon is measured in, in, in mean level spacings, right? So according to Wigner Dyson, it should go uh, like a logarithm. This RMT stays for, for logarithmic prediction. If you do numerics, you, you see that it follows this logarithm uh, very precisely, but at some energy, it starts deviate and uh, shows something else. In mesoscopic physics, this is known as uh, Al-Schuller-Shklovsky statistics, and this energy is known as, as Tauli's energy. Uh, what is it for SYK model? Again, pretty much nobody knows. Um, if you go to, ver to, 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 to very large energy, it will be Poisson and it will be, it will be linear. Um, so the question is uh, whether, uh, what's the structure of the wave functions? Um, yes, very good. Uh, so uh, Valody is the best expert in that. Um, that's a good question. Somebody must have done it, but I, I can't recall it. Yeah, so, so, so the statement is that this, if, it, it, if it go to linear at large energy, then the slope of this linear dependence has to do the fractal dimensions of, of the wave functions. And um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why, no, but anyway, good question. Um, no, okay, let's see. Yeah, that's probably not what I want to show you. Um, no, right. So uh, I will go now to analytical uh, theory of, of this story, and uh, I switch off my computer. So if you have any questions about numerics so far, please ask. Hmm? Um, as far as I understand, there is basically no difference between between complex. I know, yeah, uh, so Felix Israel and, and, and company, yes. Um, yes. Right, yes. Yes, so, so the, 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 the uh, remark was that in nuclear physics, people still continue to, uh, to think about this thing and they have uh, many results, maybe even uh, some which I forgot to mention. All right. Cool. Okay, so, um, so we want to do a theory of this thing. Uh, let me take the Hamiltonian once again. It's um, one over four factorial sum over i j k l up to n j i j k l chi i. Um, and again, I will think about them as being Majorana, but that's not not very important. Um, J in average is equal to zero, and J square in average up to symmetry properties is uh, three factorial. Uh, J uh, 
square over n cube. Again, I promised you to explain why n, n cube is a good choice. I will do in a sec. Now, some people generalize the model taking instead of four interactions, taking q fermions. So in my case, q equals four. And the common notation today is S, Y, K, Q. So I will mostly talk about S, Y, K, um, uh, four in these notations. Uh, but practically all the results are easily generalizable to, to any Q. I will try to, to mention it. If I forget, ask me how, how to do it. <laughs> all right. So now, in, in, in terms of energies, there is a sim uh, the only energy scale is this capital J. Uh, so uh, there is a scale which is one. And uh, this is my ultraviolet uh, energy scale. Now down to, to smaller energies, there is a whole zoo probably. So for one thing, there is an energy scale which is two to the power minus capital N over two. That's where the mean level spacing is. And that's where numerics, or some of the numerics which I mentioned, is done. Uh, what we will see in a while is that there is at least another energy scale, which is 1 over capital N, or maybe 1 over capital N log N, uh, where the quantum effects, uh, so this is mean level spacing. So this is quantum physics starts at this energy scale. So here it is classical. You will again see in a sec why, why I say so. Um, and possibly there are may, uh, some other energy scales in between. Again, nobody quite knows. Okay, cool. No, okay, so now uh, how do, uh, we go about the theory, so let's say we want to calculate a partition function, uh, which will be uh, e to the uh, minus integral from zero to beta Hamiltonian z time. Time is imaginary. Now, it's still a random thing, so we want to, to average this partition function. Um, now, you may know that averaging partition function is not such a great idea, and you better average logarithm of the partition function. Uh, so, so we will need replicas to, to think about that. Okay, so we will have z to the power n, and product of a from one up to little n, uh, ha. Now, eventually, this n will have to be taken to zero, but for a while, I, I will not worry about this too much. Okay? So, um, uh, so that I can write as a uh, functional integral over my, my Aranas, which has index a and index i. Uh, i goes up from one up to capital N. a goes from one up to little n, and then e to the minus integral z tau from zero to beta, um, chi z tau b. Hamiltonian. Uh, no, uh, I'm too fast. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. One sec. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I have finite temperature. Uh, well, yes. Yes, temperature, of course, is in our uh, scale. So in essence, you should think where the temperature is to, 
to, to understand what's the physics. No, all right, so, uh, so now I want to average this stuff uh, over my disorder realization. Um, so I will have to average this over disorder. So if I have e to the minus integral or plus uh, d tau j i j k l chi i chi j chi k chi l with the same replica index a and I average this like this, then I will find e to the minus uh, j square. I will need to look what's the coefficient. Um, n cube over a. And then I will have double integral d tau, d tau prime. And then I will have sum over i j k l of the capital N, chi, 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 a, 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 a chi, 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 b, 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 uh, i, j, k, l, i, j, k, l. And this is a time tau. And this one is a time tau prime. So I'm doing it a little bit fast, but uh, uh, so if, if it's too fast, then uh, slow me down. All right, so that's, that's a beast. We can uh, make it a little bit more user-friendly if we introduce notation, green function, which is a matrix in replica space, and then time space is equal to one over n, sum over i from one to capital N, chi i of um, chi a of tau and chi i b of tau prime. Okay, so this is just a notation, which is um, reasonable to call green function. And in terms of this green function, what I'm going to have is e to the minus uh, uh, now I will have n here, j square over eight, um, d tau, d tau prime, j a b tau, tau prime to the power four. Um, sum over a and b. Uh, in, in, in more general model, instead of this four, I will have q. You can easily see that. All right, cool. Uh, so now, now what I need to do, I need to, to tell my partition function that I want to use this definition. Okay, now how do I uh, do that? I will multiply this by one. That's my constitutional uh, right. And this one, I will say that this is integral over this matrices j of a delta function uh, n j minus sum i of one to capital N i chi b i i i i okay integral of a delta function is one so uh, so nothing bad happens so far and then I will write it once again. I will say that this is integral over dg and d sigma. Sigma is a conjugate matrix, and I will have an exponent. And how do I want to write it? Um, one half integral over d tau, d tau prime, sigma tau prime tau, a. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I don't do anything high tech. I just write with delta function as a as an exponent. Okay. Now with that, uh, my partition function will look as an integral of a dg and d sigma, and then um, uh, now look from now on all my fermions are purely Gaussian because the only thing which depends on fermions is this, right, and, and this. There is no more fermions because my interaction Hamiltonian is now written in terms of G, and then I have uh, this guy in terms of G and sigma. Uh, So, oops. Um, sigma and sum look similar, so I'm sorry for that. So anyway, my, my fermions are now purely Gaussian. I can integrate them out. That give me determinant, actually, since it's my Rana fermions, it's a Fafian, because this matrix should be purely anti-symmetric. Uh, so, well, let me be loose about it. Let's say that my sigma is integrated in imaginary direction. Um, but in principle, you're right, of course. It's, it's better be I here. No, okay, so that will be S which depend on G and sigma. And now what do I have? Let me go here. Um, S now will n will be n independent because look, n is sitting here, n is sitting here, and there are n my Arana fermions, so this n will be sitting in front of my uh, will be a power of my 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 Pfeffian. So long story short, this S. Sigma is given by uh, one half uh, over here. All right, so, uh, so that's already not bad because now we have a field theory written in terms of two matrices, J and sigma. I have an action which doesn't have capital N at all. There is this energy scale J square sitting here. Um, so this is actually AB to the power four tau tau prime. That's what come f uh, f from my interaction. Now you see that N plays a role of a uh, inverse Planck constant. So what is sitting here, if I would be careful, is actually, of course, a Planck constant. So N to infinity uh, limit means uh, classical physics. Planck constant goes to zero. N to infinity. This is classical. Now you see that uh, this happens not by accident, but because I carefully chosen uh, 
this scaling of, of the variance. If I would put here a different power of n, then it will not be su such a nice scaling. Question. Uh, your line for the action looks pretty much as Latinger word functional. First term is trace log uh, g minus one sigma, sigma g. So does it mean that there is a way in this model to effectively uh, presum uh, the skeleton diagrams? To, to do what? To resum the skeleton diagrams. Oh yeah, that's that's next line, of course. Um, all right. So uh, um, yeah, probably uh, if there are no other questions, I, I go exactly to this. Right. So if n is large and we are looking interested in a classical limit, then we can look for equation of motions of, of, of this action. So d s d uh, g, dg is equal to zero and ds d sigma should be equal to zero. Now ds dg will give me sigma plus or minus, I'm, I will be loose about factors, uh, j square j a b cube and ds d sigma will give me one over d tau minus sigma is equal uh, plus or minus uh, minus probably g um, is equal to uh, yeah is equal to zero. So now what is written here uh, are the two equations of motions. Let me rewrite them in a slightly more user friendly way. The second one will have form d tau minus sigma times g is equal to one, and one means delta function tau minus tau prime and delta function a b. And this is a matrix, good matrix equation, and this is nothing else but Dyson equation. So g is a green function, sigma is a self energy. And that's why I, I have chosen these notations, of course, right? So, so this equation is, 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 is just formal Dyson equation, nothing else, nothing more. Uh, this equation is, is slightly more interesting and says what sigma is in a classical limit. And what it says is sigma is uh, j square times g a b cubed. Okay. In general, this is uh, Q minus one. Okay, so that's my set of classical equations. Now, what it does for me, it does precisely what uh, Mitya said. It resum a certain subsequence of diagrams, namely, can I raise that? Yes. Well, sign is important, but my signs are probably wrong, right? So it's, don't ask too much from me to, to follow. Yeah, so pretty much all factors of two pi and plus and minus are, are, are wrong to, to the first approximation. If you want to follow them, go to the literature. All right, so, so the second equation, what tells us that the self energy sigma is actually given by free green function, which is natural. So there is a random coupling constant here and the random coupling constant here. We do a Gaussian average, so I should denote it as a dotted line. And there is a factor j square associated with this Gaussian averaging of, of a random, um, a random coupling constant, that's this statement. Um, and what my Dyson equation, together with this definition of uh, self-energy does, it resum all the diagrams with the topology uh, Uh, 
like this. Okay? And uh, what I'm stressing is that that's sort of an exact result in n to infinity limit. And this is actually a classical physics of my model, not a quantum physics. Yes? What happens with what? Um, um, so the question is what happens with, with this guy and the answer is here. Um, okay. Now that's still not a piece of cake. So it's, it's a formal resummation of this diagrammatic sequence, but go solve this equation. That's not, not that easy, okay? Now, what these smart people understood, uh, Subir probably was the first, um, although I'm, I, I'm not sure exactly, uh, that there is a interesting limit where you can solve these equations exactly. So let me tell you, this. So this uh, limit is known as conformal limit. Oops. For now, it's just not, not formal notation. Conformal limit. And uh, what you formally do, and I'll explain in a sec why it is a good idea, uh, you say that d tau is equal to zero. So you, you neglect this, okay? So at, at the moment, it's just a brave guess, but you will see why it is a, uh, why is it a good guess. Uh, so if you, um, um, if you do that, now you can, you can solve these equations. That's already much easier. And the solution is the following. I, I'll give you zero temperature solution and then I comment about finite temperature. So at zero temperature, you will find that GAB of tau and tau prime is equal to D. And sigma AB of tau and tau prime will be B cube G of delta AB tau minus tau prime um, tau minus tau prime to the power three half. So in general, this is two divided by Q. And you can easily guess what this is. I guess it's 2q minus 1 divided by q. Okay. Now, that's not, not a big deal, actually. You can guess these powers just from power counting here. That's one line. And then you can convince yourself that actually th things work. For that, you need this signum because it's time-ordered uh, green function. Um, so, um, so this is a solution. Okay? Cool. Um, now, if you go to energy representation, then what you say is G of epsilon, again, it's just power counting, one over square root of tau, you do Fourier transform d tau, so it's tau to the power one half, and you go to energy, you find that it's proportional to one over square root of epsilon. And sigma, again, power counting three half d tau, so this is one, one over square root of tau, you go to energy, uh, you get that this is square root of epsilon. Okay, 
So now you, you understand that this conformal idea is actually not such a bad thing. So this thing, it's actually epsilon times j. Uh, and that's also epsilon times j. Question on the left. Uh, question. Question? Yes. That's what I said. That's a conformal limit. Time derivative is equal to zero. Yes, time derivative of everything. So I neglect this, right? And, and then this is a solution. If I bring back this, then it is not a solution. And that's what I hopefully will discuss in, in, in five minutes. But for now, it's, it's a guess. Uh, so within this classical limit, I do another approximation. I, I neglect this, then I solve it, and uh, that's what I get. Now, why it is not such a crazy idea is that because we, this is in energy representation, this is epsilon minus sigma of epsilon, and sigma behave like square root of epsilon j. So this is square root of epsilon j. So if epsilon is much less than j, then this guy is much larger than this guy, okay? And then maybe it's not such a big crime to, to forget about this, okay? So therefore, this conformal limit is, is only justified at energies which is much, much less than, than J, okay? No questions? Cool, okay. Now, that's actually the place where uh, physics should start, but unfortunately, that's the place where 99% of the papers stops. Uh, basically, pretty much 90% of what you can see in the literature is, is about classical physics of this model, right? So they, they, they stop at this level. So in particular, uh, this logarithmic susceptibility, which uh, Subir and Ye had in their abstract, I, I, I showed you this paper, is one line calculation from here, um, because uh, spin is two fermions, so spin susceptibility chi of omega is given by, by this diagram. Of course, this is omega, this is epsilon, this is epsilon plus omega. So one line calculation, this is d epsilon, square root of epsilon is square root of epsilon plus omega. Uh, that's my green function, right? So you, you immediately see that I have a, a logarithm of j divided by omega. So, so this logarithmic susceptibility is, 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 is just this. And uh, we will we'll see tomorrow that pretty much all what people say about incoherent metals and, uh, and things like that is not more complicated than, than this observation. Okay? But uh, being sort of positive, you can say, well, this is non-Fermi liquid. Why is it non-Fermi liquid? Because what you find is that your green function, function of epsilon, behave like this, up to scale j, then it does something else. Uh, and this is one over square root of epsilon. So this is to be compared with a Fermi liquid, where we know that green function has a peak at epsilon p, which is e square over 2m minus chemical potential, and this peak is narrow, and blah, 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 right? Uh, so here it's obviously completely different. So again, the way to think about it is that without interactions, all the energy levels were strictly degenerated zero. Now you introduce interactions, uh, energy levels start to repel each other, 
Now, actually, single particle energy levels are not defined even because they all mix uh, within this huge many body exponentially large space. But effective single particle green function still has a, this huge peak at zero, and then it has a long tail of decay. Right? So quasi-particles, you can say, are completely lost. Uh, another way of saying is that self-energy is larger than the energy. Okay? So that's non-fermi liquid. Yes, Valeria. So what about periodicity? Nothing. Nothing. So exponent this periodicity is seen in exponentially small energy scales, 2 to the minus n. Okay? So these energy scales have no representation. Yes, in, in the limit n to infinity, you, you cannot even discuss this, this stuff. So we, we will see in a moment that, that there are other energy scales, namely more notable there is energy scale J divided by n. And remember, n is inverse Planck constant. And what we will see is that what green function does actually, it does like this. Now, whether it's, uh, so here it's square root of epsilon. Uh, whether it's a Fermi liquid or not is a sort of semantic, but what it is in, in a mesoscopic language, this is a zero bias anomaly. Uh, but we'll have to work a little bit harder to, to, to get to this. But sorry, uh, just following on, uh, on uh, the semantics. So even if you go to energies which is much larger than J, where presumably the self-energy is much smaller than energy, uh, it is not a Fermi liquid in the sense that there is no Fermi surface in this model. No, there's no momentum. Right. Uh, there's no momentum. So it's a zero-dimensional thing, yes. So. Uh, but still, I mean, if you have a set of levels, you could expect green function to have peaks near these levels, but it doesn't. Um, that's, of course, a miracle of, of averaging, right? So in some sense, even for finite n, in some sense, I have a thermodynamic limit because I have an infinitely large ensemble of my systems. It's a tricky stuff. Now, how much time do oh, I still have 15 minutes to go? Um, any questions so far? No? Yes. You're far away. No. The compromise limit green function. What is the definition of P? Here? No, left side. The compromise limit case. Maybe I'm missing or? P, P, G equal P over J, square root J. Oh, yes, sorry about that. Uh, B is one over four pi to the power one quarter. But in my universe, it's, it's one. As I told you, two is equal to pi and equal to one. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, now, um, now you may notice, and that's again, probably Subir uh, was the first who noticed it, that this is actually not the only solution. You can find other, so, so this is not the only solution of these equations, 
even in the conformal limit. Okay? There is a whole family of solutions, and that's important. And this family of the solutions is given by uh, reparameterizations of time. Repa ah, symmetry. Namely, you can say that your time goes to f of tau. Now, time goes uh, from zero to beta. Uh, your f should also go from zero to beta. So you should understand that it's, in general, something like this. Uh, so this is my function f. Right? It, it better be monotonic because time is, is probably monotonic and we cannot go back in time. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's an arbitrary function. And if you do that, you will discover that you have a whole family of solutions which are given by J, A, B, tau, tau prime again b square root of j, ignum f of tau minus f of tau prime, uh, f prime of tau to the power one quarter, um, f prime of tau prime to the power one quarter divided by f of tau minus f of tau prime to the power one half. And again, this power is actually one over Q in a more general setting. And sigma uh, has a similar form, ta ta ta, F prime of tau to the power three quarter, F prime of tau prime to the power three quarter, F minus F to the power three half. Now, you can easily check that with this substitution, my equations are still valid. This is trivially true because that's just a second line is just a cube of the first line. And the first line is true because I can make change of variables from tau to f, and then this convolution operation will, will go through. Okay? So, so there is a family of solutions, my, uh, uh, the one which I just told you about and I sort of called non-Fermi liquid and blah, 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 is not unique solution. Uh, there, there is a whole family of them. Um, So there is a soft manifold of, of my action, right? So notice that that was my uh, extremal point, settle point of my action, right? That's these equations. I told you this is a solution. This is a mean, the minimal of my action. But now I tell you that there are other solutions. So I can go from one solution to another solution by changing tau to, to f of tau. So there is a whole family of solutions which, which minimize the action, provided I, I forget about this d tau. Okay. So this is a soft mode. My, if I forget about this, d, it's, it's, if I forget about d tau, it's actually zero mode of my theory. Nothing depends on this f. If I recall that I still have d, d tau, then it is a soft mode because that's derivatives. Um, and that's what, what we are going to discuss. But before I, I do this, so let me just mention in passing that there is a very special choice of f of tau. Namely, if I choose it to be what? 
Um, I forgot. Um, tangent of pi tau over beta. So this, this is a strange choice because it maps the interval, uh, the infinite interval of tau to a finite interval zero to beta in, in F. So with this particular choice of my reparameterization, I can write down finite temperature solutions of, of this guy. So this is a standard trick that in conformal limit, finite temperature and zero temperature are different by conformal transformation, which is this, okay? So if, if you worry about finite temperatures, then just use this F, substitute it here, and you will, you will have finite temperature solutions. So they will look actually very simple. They will look like sine of tau minus tau prime pi over beta to the power one half. And here it will be sine uh, to the power three half. So, uh, so doing finite temperature and, and zero temperature is, is pretty much same physics. I just need to have this special conformal transformation. Okay? Okay, so therefore I will mostly limit myself to, to zero temperature for now. And if we, if we will need finite temperature, I will just jump to finite temperature results. Cool, okay, so in a uh, sort of scientific language, this symmetry is called diff S1, which stays for diffeomorphisms of unit circles into unit circle, and uh, which is represented by, by this figure, and my action, provided I forget about this, is symmetric with respect to this diffeomorphism transformations of circle into a circle. This is infinite parameter group of symmetries because you can expand this function f in a, in a Taylor series and each coefficient in this expansion will be, um, will be a parameter, okay? And the generators will of course form a Virasoro algebra uh, as, as usual. Okay, I, I, will, I don't need it, but uh, uh, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Now, another observation, which is also crucial, is that the actual symmetry is not diff S1, but actually diff S1 slash SL2R. Okay, and that's what uh, I will explain in a sec. Namely, there are special transformations, conformal, if I choose f of tau to be a tau plus b divided by c tau plus d, such that determinant of a, b, c, d is equal to one, this is called Möbius transformation. You can check that if you use this f and substitute it here, your green function doesn't change at all. So this particular transformation does not introduce a new solution into my saddle point equations, okay? Any other f of t does create a new solution. This particular form of f does not create a new solution. Okay? So therefore, I have to separate, factorize these transformations out of total group of, um, of my soft modes. Uh, so my, my soft manifold is actually a coset space of diff S1 uh, divided by SL2R. So you see why it is SL2R, because it's completely parameterized by two by two matrices with real coefficients and, and unit determinants. Okay, and um, 
So since the determinant is unit, uh, is, there is one constraint, there are actually three parameters in this group. So in the language of Virasora algebra, I have to take out three lowest generators of my Virasora, which is just, uh, uh, yeah, so which are given here. Okay? No, all right. So now what, what we ne the next step will be, I will just announce it. I will not do it uh, today, I will do it next time. But the, 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 the philosophy is this. So we found the settle point, uh, that's good. Now we found a soft manifold around this settle point. Right? Everything else is presumably massive modes, but this particular degree of freedom is a soft mode. So what we want to do, we want to integrate out this soft manifold and forget about massive modes, like what we usually do in the sigma models. Okay? So, uh, so what, what we want to do is to, uh, So in my theory, instead of having this huge integral over two, two matrices, I want to reduce it to the integral over these reparameterization nodes uh, with some action which depend on these reparameterization nodes, and then I will calculate some observable. Observable depend on reparameterization mode, for example, if I want to calculate green function, that's an explicit way how a green function depends on, on the reparameterization mode. So that I know. What I don't know yet, I don't know what is this action in terms of soft mode, and I don't know what's the measure. Okay. So what I will start doing tomorrow, I will tell you what's the action. I will state what the measure is. I will not try to derive it here, but we know what it is. And then I will show you how to do this integral uh, explicitly, and then we'll be able to, to obtain um, something which I already erased. But I will repeat it again. All right, uh, I probably finish here and let, let's do questions.